Deadly Tarantula Girl coming to you from my private Serpentarium with another breeding video. Tonight I'm going to be pairing my Stromatopelma calciatum female with the mature male that Kelly Stevenson sent me. You guys probably saw that unboxing recently. She sent me two Porteroy, two female Porteroy and the male calciatum. Here we have her little male and you can see who's webbed up quite a lot. My female, my arboreal breeding chamber, all my regular stuff that I use, mulch in the bottom. I have a piece of cork bark to serve as a barrier. I make this fairly nice and damp. I know this looks kind of like creepy and gross and dirty, but I assure you there is a reason for this. I've explained this in videos in the past. This chamber has been used for breeding multiple times. A lot of breeding has occurred in there. There are tarantula love pheromones in this breeding chamber. And although I do clean it, I do not scrub it out thoroughly because those are chemicals that stimulate breeding. There are a few things that you can do to stimulate breeding. Number one, serious hydration. Number two, put them in an environment that facilitates breeding. Number three, without totally taking them out of their comfort zone. So what I do, as I have explained a million times before, if you watch my channel, I actually set the enclosures into a larger enclosure with the lids off and I allow these animals to cohabitate for four to 10 days, depending on the activity that I'm seeing. Obviously, they need to be well fed far in advance. If you have a hungry or thin tarantula, this is not a good idea. First of all, you never want to try and breed a female that's too thin. A lot of the males are going to start looking kind of scrawny and worn down because they are truly at the end of their life. But you want to make sure you're feeding him as much as he will eat and that your girls are nice and robust or else they should not be set up to breed. This is not an animal you want to play with by any means. I'm watching my hands as I reach in and out, although they are lightning fast. I have a nice piece of circular cork in there. So there's some neutral ground. So what they can do is stay in their enclosures as much as they like and they can get out of their enclosures as much as they like. Usually what the male will do is he will venture near her habitat and then the breeding will often occur inside her enclosure or sometimes on neutral ground. Although I don't know how often which occurs where because they do not breed in front of me. This is what the setup looks like once everybody is in there. They have some neutral ground. They each have their own little homes that they can hang out in. There's plenty of room for them each to escape if they feel threatened and typically get away with their life. On a side note, I am in desperate need of a mature male Chromatopelma sinopubescens or green bottle blue. I have about 10 females that are ready and waiting. So if anybody wants to do a breeding loan with me on that, that could be extremely lucrative for you. And once these animals have paired up, I promise you I will make sure that you get a better look at them at some point. But this time period is not when you want to stress out your animal. You want them to transition nicely and calmly and that that will best facilitate breeding. Just wanted to give a big thanks to Kelly. I just can't wait for these tarantulas to breed. I'm very excited about this and keep your eyes peeled for updates on these two. I want you to comment below what is your favorite African arboreal and I love you guys as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you again soon.